Thank you, members of this committee, for inviting me to testify. As I'm talking to you right now, people are scared in Italy province. Children are dying. They face, they face constant bombardment. Schools, hospitals, and bakeries have all been targeted. All day, every day, civilians live in fear of the horror of the regime, Russia and Iran. During the humanitarian disaster in Idlib, we cannot forget why so many people have come to this disparate place to evade the very same detention I faced for over three years. When the regime advances and takes another village, those cities become like cities of ghosts. Innocent men, women, and children either die flee or end up in detention centers like me. <coughs> what I'm going to tell you in the coming few minutes is a story, true story. My father left me at a broadest in the street of my hometown, Banyas. On March 18th of 2011, before he departed, he whispered a few words in my ears. Guess what it was? I had participated in the demonstrations and only for asking for freedom, I was arrested. And I was tortured. I was confused, I didn't understand why they arrested me. I was 15 years old. Don't really understand the situation and what's going on. And I was as like every other kid on this planet. They think police is like somebody who protects you. That's what my thought about the police even in Syria. Especially that my father was an officer. He retired in 2009, but still, still for me it was my dad was an officer. He protected me, that, and that's what should, the police should do. In prison they tortured me. And my torture forced me to say that I have killed, I had weapons. But they didn't come that easy. He had to pull out my fingernails out of my fingers first before I give this false confession. I was only 15 years old when the guard opened scar in my body. I was only 15 years old when my life experience became nearly too much to bear. I was only 15 years old when I wished to die. I remember one good thing from prison. One month, something was different. I didn't know what's going on, but we get less torture, we get more food, and the guards is not screaming anymore. They're not coming, they're not burning our bodies with their cigarettes. They're giving us one full potato instead for half one. When I got out of prison, I tried to match what happened in this day, in this month, when I was in prison and I got more food than usually, what happened outside. It was when Caesar pictures being released. Everybody around the world talking about prisoners and what's going on in Syria's prison. That's why we have to speak. That's why we have to do anything, even just write on Twitter or talk or have a testimony. This testimony gives hope for a lot of people. I just published yesterday on social media that I'm going to be testifying together with Caesar and Red, and people was too kind. Those who say it's amazing, something may happen, they may help us doing something. And other people who say that happened before, they know more than what you know about your own experience. They're not going to change anything. Let's show them the opposite. I remember one Tuesday, that beautiful Tuesday, when I was in Sydney Prison. prison. It was the 9th of June, 2015. I already been in prison in three years and experienced all kind of torture. And I was starving. But the guard opened the door and he said, Omar. The only time they say your name and say neighbors and is when they going to kill you. They took me from my room. They killed somebody who was next to me, asked me to pull him outside of the room. 
I pulled this buddy out. I looked at his face. It was my best friend at that time. The guards took me, isolated me in room for 48 hours. And every single hour, day and night, when the watch of the guard beep, he comes and asks me a question. How do you want me to kill you? Be creative. I was forced to give 68 answers and sit for 48 because not all of them was nice or good enough for him to enjoy killing me. After 48 hours, they pulled me out of the room, took me in the car, blindfolded my eyes, my hands tied behind me, and they put me in the street facing the ground. The officer is walking slowly behind me, and I'm scared because I don't want to see how they're going to kill me. I don't know. He walks, talks about my death, then he's just got silent. And load, aim. Didn't go that quickly. It took a billion years for me to feel between load and aim. It takes so long time. Then he said, shoot, poof. And I died for the first time. I never died before. I didn't know how it feels or what's going to happen. Have any of you died before and can explain how it feels to die? I didn't, so I was just thinking, wow, finally to after life. I woke up still alive, didn't know what happened. The guy they killed in the room when they come to take me was a guy who was supposed to be released. They killed him. They put my name on his face. And they took me outside of prison because it was my day to be executed. Took me outside of prison with his name because my mother paid $20,000 to an officer to get me out of prison. She didn't know how, but my mom wanted me to be alive after that they killed my father and my siblings in an attack on our village in Syria. When the regime take an area, people should, will die, flee, or get arrested. That's what happened to them on the Gurdjieff. What I mentioned just was the mental torture you experience by the same regime. I didn't talk about the physical because it's not going to help you understand. Because the physical torture, you don't understand it if you don't experience it. So what's waiting people in Idlib is the same thing if we don't help them. The people of Syria are suffering. They may be used to pain, but it's not pain who breaks people. It's fear. They fear not being able to feed their children. They fear being arrested, captured, and tortured to death. It's not torture was the worst. It's waiting torture the worst. Sometimes it seems impossible to help these people, but as Nelson Mandela said, it always seems impossible until it's done. We have to do something. And I want to conclude by quoting your, the words of your own president when he said, Assad is an animal. I hope you all agree with him. I do. Thank you.